For the first Alex problem that we're going to look at here, predicting how reaction rate varies with pressure, concentration, and temperature. This problem, she, the Alex is, is giving you a scenario where you have an engineer that is studying this particular chemical reaction, H2O plus CO2 gas makes H2CO3. And the reaction is being run in three different ways, so three different sized containers, and three, uh, or all at the same temperature. So it's the same reaction taking place in A, B, C, and D. And the only difference in, in these four different um, scenarios is the size of the container for this particular reaction. So the temperature is staying constant for every reaction. And it's asking you to evaluate which one of, or to, to rank these reactions in order of their rate, like how fast would they go? And so this is gonna require you to remember stuff about the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. When we have gases, because that's what's going on with this reaction. When we have gases, um, that are all at the same temperature, like these guys, they're all at the same temperature, the volume of the container is going to dictate how close the gas molecules are to each other. And actually, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw four containers. I'm going to draw container A, which maybe is this size, two liters, and container B, which is four liters, so it's bigger. And container C, which is only one liter, so it's smaller. This is A, this is B, this is C. And container D, which is eight liters, so it's really, 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 really big. And inside these containers, we have the um, same amount of each reactant that's going into these containers. So for container A, let's just, let's just say for all of these, just to make our pictures easy, let's put two red molecules to represent water. Let's put two red molecules in and let's put two blue molecules in to represent the CO2 because they're, they're in a one-to-one -one ratio. So we'll put two blue molecules in and like that. And the question is asking, um, my red molecule here looks like a mouth, I can't handle that. The question is asking how fast is this reaction gonna take place? Well, in order for the reaction to take place, a red molecule has to find a blue molecule. So a red molecule and a blue molecule have to meet up and then they're able to react. And really this question is as simple as how easy is it for the red molecules and the blue molecules to find each other? When they're in a really crowded tiny space and the red molecules are jammed right up against each other, the reaction's gonna move really, really fast. And when the molecules are in a big, huge space, they've got a lot of empty space between them, it's gonna be harder for the molecules to find each other. And so that reaction is gonna go pretty slow. So let's go back to Alex and let's put that in. In our small container, we're gonna have the highest rate of reaction and our biggest container, it will be the lowest rate of reaction. And we'll just continue to rank accordingly. And like, don't make this problem hard because it's not. So you've got that. Let's see if my next problem gives me a different variable. Ooh, Alex is getting exciting with this one. So let's work on this one together. This looks really cool. So on this problem, we have two different sized containers. We have two liter containers and four liter containers. So here's my container A, two liters. And here's my container B, four liters. And here's my container C. C, also four liters, and my container D, two liters. And let's put in our molecules. So let's go two red for the zinc, two red molecules into each container. And let's put in two blue molecules for our H2SO4. Two blue molecules go in there, just kind of spreading them out a little bit. And I see in my B, it kind of looks like I got an extra red molecule in there. And so now we're trying to think about how easy will it be for these molecules to find each other inside of this container. So um, part of it is a size thing. So container A is going to be reacting faster than container B and container D is going to be reacting faster as well. So container A and container D are definitely going to be our fastest 
and C and B are going to be our slowest. So it's kind of a tie for first place and a tie for second place. And I really am rethinking writing ones and twos. That's confusing. So container A, because it's a small container, is either going to be the fastest or the second fastest. And D is either going to be the fastest or the second fastest. And then containers B and C, those will be the slower containers because those molecules are farther apart. So to help us figure out A versus D, which one is faster, let's look at the temperatures here. A is 9 degrees and D is 11 degrees. So D is fast as a higher temperature. And as you know, as temperature increases, the molecules move faster. So that means that in container D, they are going to be able to find each other faster because not only are they closer together, but they are moving faster. So that makes container A number two. And then let's compare B and C. So B is at 9 degrees and C is at 8 degrees. B is warmer. So B is going to move faster than C. Let's plug that into Alex and see how we did. We went uh, 2, 3, 4, 1. Those were the rankings that I came up with. 2, 3, 4, 1. And let's see if there's a twist on our last problem. Um, no, then we'll, I'll, we'll look at this one anyways, but this one is, this one's actually easier than the one that we just did. So in this problem, all of our containers are the exact same size. They are all five liter containers, which means that all the molecules are the same distance apart. And so in this case, we're only looking at temperature. That's our only variable. And the higher temperature, which is 1300, that is going to be the fastest moving molecule. So that will be the fastest reaction. So the high temperature is the fastest. And then we just go down, rank them by temperature uh, along the way. So that one was actually really easy. Um, so let's take a look at our next one. This is an energy diagram problem. And so um, this problem is just simply uh, going to ask you to read some data off of an energy diagram, stuff that we've done before, but it's been quite a while. Uh, so looking at this energy diagram, it's got on here the reactants and the products. I'm gonna scroll this up so I can write on it. And first thing it wants you to, uh, uh, to give is the heat of the reaction. The heat of the reaction, the delta H, that is the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. And so you're going to need to read that right off of the diagram. Our products are, no, our reactants are at 300 kilojoules per mole and our products are at 150 kilojoules per mole. So the difference between them is 150 kilojoules per mole. And you better pay attention to the sign. Is it a positive or negative? We're starting high and we're going low. So the heat of this reaction is a negative 150. So you're looking at two things. You're looking at what is the numerical value and you're also looking at the sign. If we are dropping in energy, remember this is um, this is going to be final minus initial. So this is, in this case, it's going to be 150 minus 300. It's always final minus initial. Is the reac reaction exothermic or endothermic? Well, we lost heat. We can see this from the diagram. We went down in energy. Heat exited the reaction, so that's ex exothermic. Can you determine the activation energy? You might have completely forgotten what activation energy is. Activation energy is the difference in energy from the starting point, so that's right here, to the highest point on the reaction, right there. So there's our activation energy, this little amount right there. Uh, and the activation energy is 50 kilojoules per mole. That is a 350 minus 300. Activation energy is always expressed as a positive value because it can only be positive. Uh, it can only be, um, it's, it's never gonna be a negative number. 
Can you determine the activation energy of the reverse reaction? So what's going on for the reverse reaction? I need another color here. The reverse reaction is going to be the reaction that happens this way. So C plus D going to A. In the reverse reaction, the activation energy is the difference between this starting point and the highest point, which is this number right here. That is... 350 minus, what did we start with? 150, so that's gonna be a 200, 200 kilojoules per mole. So let's get those numbers in and then let's see what we get next. Negative 150, we said it was exothermic. Can we determine the activation energy? It was 50 and the reverse activation energy was 100, 200, 200. And let's see what Alex gives us next. Next thing we get, same, is this, all of these are gonna be the same. Like the first thing that I see when I look at it, I just see exothermic versus endothermic right away. I can see that my products C and D are higher on the graph. So I know that that reaction was endothermic. What's the heat of reaction there? I'm looking at C plus D minus A plus B. C plus D minus A plus B, that's 200. I don't know if it wants me to give it a positive sign, I'm afraid, so I'm gonna put it in there. Can I determine the activation energy? That's the high point, 400 minus A plus B, the starting point, 400 minus 100 is 300. And can I determine the activation energy for the reverse? That's high point minus C plus D. High point minus C plus D, that's 400 minus 300. So that'll be 100. And let's see what Alex is giving us next. I think it didn't like my positive sign. Relating the activation energy to the rate of reaction. This one actually looks pretty tricky. I think I'm probably gonna put this in its own video.